Welcome back to the channel. This week I'm talking about our radiant flooring system. Why we chose to do it, how we're going to design it, and how much it's going to cost. So let's get right into it. The main reason we chose radiant flooring is really because of the even heat it provides. It is, I think, the best way there is to heat a structure if you heat the floor surface, all that heat rises evenly and the house has one even gradient of heat in it, rather than the traditional forced air system where it's blowing hot air at the perimeters of the house and collecting cold air in the middle. So I think radiant makes a lot of sense in that aspect. Second, if you're ever putting a concrete slab in your house, whether it be in your basement, your garage that you want to keep somewhat heated, anything like that, you really only have one chance to put that radiant tubing in. And that's before you pour the slab because you've kind of missed your opportunity after that. So for me, I thought it was kind of a no-brainer to put the tubing in the slab. Maybe I wasn't even going to hook it up at the very onset of things, but at least having the tubing gives you the future opportunity to use radiant heat in the slab. Being able to heat up that large thermal mass of concrete at the bottom of your structure is kind of just like putting a giant hot plate underneath your house kind of gives you that gradient heating effect that I just mentioned and I just feel like it's one of the most logical ways to do it. Another reason we chose this, even though we're probably going to hook it up initially with propane uh, as, as the fuel source, I think we eventually in the next 10 years or so will want to put in an outdoor wood boiler and that allows us to heat the whole house with firewoods because we'll be living on a six acre wooded lot with essentially unlimited amounts of firewood. I don't mind the idea of a wood stove in the house. I know it creates a lot of mess bringing in firewood and with the bark and the smoke that it creates inside the house when you open the stove and that sort of thing. And if I can avoid that, I will. I'd like to keep all the mess outside. And those outdoor wood boilers, you can really load them up. And so you only have to, you only have to go feed them like twice a day um, because they burn super hot and super efficiently because you're not worried about having a fire inside the house. So using the radiant floor both in the slab and in the joisted floor above the garage, we would have the capability to heat the house only with firewood. And even though there's the initial investment up front of the radiant system and the wood boiler, it has the potential to save us quite a bit of money in our heating bills in the long run. Now I should mention we are still running ductwork in the house for traditional air conditioning. Radiant flooring doesn't have the same capabilities of making the floor cold to cool your house. So we do still have to do that. And because we need an air handler anyway, I'm actually probably just going to get a cheap propane furnace to serve as my air handler and a backup source of heat if the radiant system were to ever go down for any reason. All right, now that you know our reasons why we chose radiant heat, let's talk about how we're actually going to implement it. So the first thing you need to think about, especially when you're doing radiant heat in a slab, is how not to lose all that heat into the ground. For us, that means two inches of extruded polystyrene, XPS. Uh, it's the purple or green foam board you'd see at Home Depot. And we're gonna lay that all across under the slab and actually down the walls of our stem wall. And this basically insulates the slab completely from the ground and from losing heat around the perimeter. Slabs actually lose most of their heat right around the edge. This insulation is about R value 10, which is never gonna be as good as like R60 in the attic or R23 or so in the walls, but just having that little bit of thermal break between the ground, which is essentially an infinite heat sink, uh, and our heated slab is going to make all the difference and be able to keep that slab warm and do it efficiently. Once we have our two inches of insulation down over our four inches of gravel subbase, I'm gonna put a plastic 10 mil vapor barrier over top and that will make sure that no ground moisture can ever work its way up into the slab and cause kind of a damp condition. And then on top of that vapor barrier, I'm gonna be running all of my circuits of half inch PEX tubing. I'll be using PEX staples to essentially fasten that tubing down in evenly spaced circuits about one foot on center. Half inch tubing has a six inch bend radius, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're laying that out. Now it would be easy just to snake the whole thing in one gigantic circuit in the floor, you have one inlet, one outlet, but unfortunately the frictional losses of that fluid in that pipe would really, really make that just not work. You lose all your heat uh, early on and the pump work would be extremely high. So the best course of action is to break it up into individual circuits. The max circuit length that I'm shooting for is about 300 foot, but most importantly, I wanna make sure that all of my circuits in that slab are right about the same length 
um, probably between 250 and 300 foot of half inch pecs. This just makes sure that it's easy to balance everything at the manifold so you have even flow through all of your circuits and you're gonna have even pump work and even heat distributed through the slab. For my garage, which is about 1,240 square foot, I did kind of a preliminary layout in the CAD software and that put me right around six circuits. We're gonna be doing a system upstairs too on uh, essentially the whole upstairs floor and that's gonna probably be another five or six circuits run in between the joist bays and stapled up to the bottom of the subfloor. We'll insulate below that with some bat blanket, probably like an R23 rock wool or something like that. I gotta give a shout out to Radiant Tech. Their website and their design manuals where most of this information I'm telling you came from and I will probably end up buying a few components from them, maybe the control system and the PEX itself. They sell PEX that has one foot increments marked on it so you can easily balance all the lengths of your circuits on site. As far as the control system and the heater goes, I will probably use a pre-assembled board. Um, they sell them with the expansion tanks, the pumps, the flow, the mixing valves, the flow balance, that sort of thing already all integrated. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, but it saves quite a bit of time in assembling all those components and figuring it out yourself. Um, so that's probably the route I'm gonna go on controls. And then as far as the heater goes, I'm still not 100% certain on this. Uh, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of good ways to do this. You could either use like a tankless water heater and do sort of like a closed circuit for just the floors. Uh, and then something else that Radiant Tech recommends is they call it the open direct system where you use one hot water heater that's rated for both your standard water heater needs for your house and for floor space heating. Uh, and then it actually runs in one big open loop. All the floor water is actually potable and, uh, and it serves a little bit of double duty too because in the summer when you're running hot water, it pulls some of the heat out of the floor and does do a little bit of cooling in your floor. So the heater is not something I've 100% figured out, but I will definitely keep you informed as the design progresses when we're putting it all together. All right, let's get to the biggest thing that I'm sure everyone wants to know, and that is cost. I have done some uh, preliminary cost estimates on the system, and I think I have a pretty good ballpark of where it's gonna end up. Um, I'm gonna start with the insulation, because that's a must when you're doing a radiant floor. For my needs, for my 1,240 square foot garage, plus insulating down a 40 inch stem wall all the way around, I'm gonna need about 61 sheets of four by eight by two inch rigid insulation. Right now, it's extremely high. It's like $40 a sheet. The best I can find is actually Home Depot. I called around a bunch of distributors and they're all more than Home Depot is. So it's gonna cost me like $25 to $2,700 after tax for just my insulation. Next is the PEX. For all of my circuits, both in the slab and the joisted floor, it's gonna be around 2,000 feet of PEX, so two 1,000 foot spools. That'll run me about $500. After that comes my manifolds. I'll probably have two six loop manifolds, one for the slab, one for the upstairs floor. And I'll be using PVC sweeps that come out of the slab and direct all the tubing up, upward. So I can't ignore that cost either. All said and done, those components will probably cost me five to $600, maybe 700 after tax. Next is the pump and controls. That's pretty, pretty expensive if you get the uh, pre-assembled units, which is what I'm leaning towards. I'm figuring about $3,000 for that fully assembled unit. And finally, the heater. If I go with the tankless kind of closed loop system, I probably can get away with a pretty standard tankless heater at around $1,000. If I go with the open loop system, Radiant Tech actually recommends this, recommends this Polaris water heater, and uh, it's like an all stainless, direct vent, uh, non-condensing water heater and it is really expensive. I got it priced out, it was like $5,000 for a water heater. That kind of makes me shiver a little bit, so I probably won't go that route if I'm really gonna have to spend five grand on a water heater. So I will figure something out to make it cheaper. Uh, I'm gonna, for now, assume I'm gonna go with the tankless and spend $1,000 on the heater. I can always just get a traditional, uh, regular water heater for the house standard water. So all said and done, I think the system is gonna come out somewhere around $8,000 uh, with all the miscellaneous fittings and everything I need to buy. So it is certainly an upgrade over traditional heating and cooling. Um, and of course, I still am gonna run my, my ducting and, and have a propane furnace slash air handler for my AC. But I think it is an upgrade that's worth it in the long run. It'll be really efficient and nice to be able to heat the house through the floor. It'll just be really cozy not to have to bundle up or wear any socks when you're just walking around in the living room or whatever. So that is pretty much our radiant system in a nutshell. Uh, I'm sure there are several other ways to do it. If you have any experience with this, I would love to hear your comments. 
But I hope you're able to get something out of this video if you're thinking about designing and installing your own radiant system. I feel like it's an awesome way to heat your home. Uh, for those that have seasonal allergies or anything, it keeps a lot more dust out of the air than your traditional forced air system would do. And I think if installed right, it probably will save you a little bit of money on energy costs too. So once again, thanks for watching. If you got something out of it, I would love if you subscribed and followed along. We're going to be breaking ground this spring and there's a lot more to come on this channel on the build. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.